China and Russia are very keen for a BRICS bank and an alternate currency. The launch of the BRICS bank. This is a historic decision. In this edition of Economic Divide, BRICS countries, the top five emerging economies of the world. A historic deal. $100 billion development bank to counter the World Bank and the IMF. A step closer to dump the U.S. dollar. Stay tuned as we dive into the world of BRICS. Do they really have a chance at claiming their stake in the financial world? The $100 billion development bank, a step in the right direction, but a decoupling from the dollar? Well, we're going to tell you how that may happen and that perhaps it's happened already and why BRICS a share of global GDP, how it's going to outpace growth of some of the world's largest economies. BRICS, a group of emerging economies that includes Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa. Originally, it was an investment catchphrase. They banded together on the global stage. The population stands at 2.998 billion people. That's almost 3 billion people. That equals 41.6% of the world's total, with a combined GDP of about $16 trillion. Let's first begin by breaking down what BRICS are, their goals and ambitions. The 2008 financial crisis was mainly due to the subprime mortgage crisis, which began in the United States. But too much devotion to the dollar is also considered as another reason whose aftershocks are being felt in Europe and the U.S. even today. Countries that thought they had found a savior in the form of IMF loans are criticizing the lender for holding them captive. According to the IMF bailout terms, the borrowing countries have to slash jobs, cut pensions, wages, and laws, all at the lender's whim. Take Spain, for example. One million people out of work. More than half of the nation's unemployed is out of work. Portugal is grappling with a banking crisis and a shrinking GDP, while Greece has the worst unemployment rate in the entire EU. So what would be the alternative to the IMF and also the World Bank? BRICS, a group of emerging economies that includes Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa. Originally an investment catchphrase, they banded together on the global stage. Goldman Sachs economist Jim O'Neill first coined the name in 2001, predicting that the BRICS a share of global GDP would increase significantly over the first decade of the century and would outpace growth of some of the world's largest economies. What uh, the new BRICS system allows is for these countries, uh, the Russians, the Brazilians, the Chinese, to really uh, use their economic clout to get more friends internationally, to influence foreign regimes, uh, to pick winners and losers in their international economy, uh, to, re to reward those states that uh, behave in a more friendly manner uh, towards the BRIC countries. And so the U.S., of course, has always used the IMF as a, a political tool to influence foreign regimes. And so these countries are trying to do the same. And uh, yes, this will probably allow them to do more of that and will provide more options for unaligned countries that are neither uh, in the sphere of the IMF or uh, with the BRICS countries to really pick and choose perhaps between the two. And that's what the BRICS are hoping for, is that they can lure away uh, some countries that are uh, deeply affiliated economically with the U.S. or the IMF and, and bring them into a, a new uh, international sphere. BRICS uh, is about joining forces about the uh, emerging uh, powers. China, Brazil, India, uh, Russia and uh, South Africa. Uh, they are now actually challenging uh, the word uh, uh, dominion, uh, domination that uh, USA and uh, uh, Europe uh, exercises. And uh, because they are now uh, more and more integrating their uh, cooperation uh, on the political field 
and uh, financial field, you have the BRICS Bank and, uh, and uh, other uh, forms of cooperation. This is uh, seen as a major threat uh, by USA and uh, European Union countries to, to their world power. The BRICS Bank uh, will uh, act uh, in a way like uh, the World Bank and, uh, and uh, also some functions of the IMF. Uh, so uh, these BRICS countries and the countries that, uh, that the BRICS will uh, support are not anymore on the mercy uh, of the US-led uh, IMF and World Bank uh, to conduct their uh, policies. So if there is a, a crisis in one of the uh, countries, then the BRICS mechanism uh, can come and step in. One of the goals of the BRICS is de-dollarization. The creation of the BRICS Development Bank was an indication of that. The bank could temporarily even act as a BRICS central bank, and when the time comes, issue a new BRICS currency. And recent news of decoupling from the dollar confirmed this move. China and Russia have effectively switched to domestic currencies and trading using financial tools as swaps and forwards as they seek to reduce the influence of the U.S. dollar and foreign exchange risks. July 15, 2014, another milestone for BRICS countries. This group of countries finally signed the document to create the $100 billion BRICS Development Bank in a reserve currency pool worth over another $100 billion. This is a historic decision to create a development bank of large scale because the total authorized capital may go to $100 billion the first stage, $50 billion. We are talking about a large-scale institution that will be able to operate, let's say, $500 billion in new credit. Finally, the opposition to the dollar was born. Both would counter the influence of Western-based lending institutions and the dollar. Well, uh, we have uh, actually a monopoly situation where the dollar it's a monopoly, or maybe it's a duopoly, because in Europe uh, the, the monopoly is shared by uh, the euro. And uh, uh, through this, uh, uh, this strength of the mo monopoly, these countries can keep their uh, interest rate at virtually zero uh, percent. And uh, uh, if, if they wouldn't have a zero percent uh, interest rate uh, uh, at this time, then uh, the economies would uh, simply collapse. Now, uh, with the BRICS, uh, uh, new forms of cooperation are emerging. And uh, one more, uh, uh, the most important thing in, in terms of financials uh, is the strengthening of the yuan, the Chinese currency. And the Chinese currency uh, is uh, g going to uh, get to be a world uh, reserve uh, currency. That would be, uh, put a strain on, on the dollar and euro, and uh, it might lead uh, to a collapse of those economies within, uh, say, five years. The launch of the BRICS Bank is the first time we have seen a major international financial institution launched without the participation of the traditional Britain Woods powers in the United States, Europe, and Japan. And as such, it certainly represents a potential alternative to the existing global monetary system. But I think at the same time, we need to recognize that simply launching it will not, is not enough. We need to see the extent to which it grows, the amount of money that it's actually able to lend out before we can judge whether or not it will actually have a systemic impact on the global monetary system. But it certainly has the potential for the first time to have that. Well, we should think of the BRICS Bank as really just uh, a new phase in a long trend that's that's been taking place really since 1971. We still speak often of the United States as still being part of the Bretton Woods monetary system, but that system really ended uh, with Nixon back in 1971 when uh, the French started uh, demanding that their dollars be redeemed in gold, and so the U.S. got off the Bretton Woods system and was, and was forced off it by other Western European countries as well. And so this is part of that larger trend since World War II 
where the United States has uh, been faced with a variety of international challenges uh, to what we could call its monetary hegemony. And that is where the, the United States dollar is used as the international reserve currency and is used for almost all international um, exchanges. And so the U.S. is able to use the dollar to exert a lot of international pressure on other countries. And so other countries have wanted for decades to be able to come up with some way to decrease uh, the United States' ability to do this with the dollar. And um, it's really just been in recent years that the growing power of uh, China and Brazil and Russia ha that allows them to really put in place something new that might really challenge uh, the dollar's position internationally. And so this latest step is really the first major change that we've been able to see in several years. And so we shouldn't think of it as a totally new thing that's taking place. We should just think of it as the latest step in a long-term attempt by other countries to really try to constrain the United States uh, with uh, its uh, economic influence worldwide. When we talk about the BRICS and the institutions that they can put together as a potential replacement for the traditional existing mon global monetary system, which is obviously led by the United States and Europe, um, I think we need to be, have some, a degree of realism here. That yes, the BRICS uh, grouping have a potential to get together. They represent five large emerging markets that are growing rapidly. But we should also be clear that these are all countries that are actually right now under some significant economic stress. And they are countries that may not in fact be able to uh, find that much common ground on a whole host of issues other than actually agreeing to come up with an alternative to the existing system. But simply agreeing to not to want to have an alternative doesn't mean that you can be sure that you can be able to create it. The new bank will provide money for infrastructure and development projects, and unlike the IMF or the World Bank, each nation has equal say regardless of GDP size. Each BRICS member would put an equal share into establishing the startup capital of $50 billion with a goal to reach $100 billion. The BRICS Bank would be headquartered in Shanghai, and India would preside as president the first year, with Russia the chairman of the representatives. BRICS Bank will be one of the major multilateral development finance institutions in this world. That's what the Russian President Vladimir Putin said at the 6th BRICS Summit in Fortaleza, Brazil. This was seen as a first step to break the dominance of the U.S. dollar in global trade, as well as dollar-backed institutions such as the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, both U.S.-based institutions in which BRICS countries have little influence within. The IMF, World Bank, and the European Central Bank, they are the ones who usually provide the loans but with strings attached for countries, all influenced by the United States. So when BRICS announced the $100 billion development bank seen as a counter to their efforts, they all had to react, especially the United States, who's been accused of meddling in BRICS countries' internal affairs. The $100 billion crisis lending fund was also established. China would contribute the lion's share about $41 billion, Russia, Brazil, and India to chip in an additional $18 billion each, and South Africa would contribute $5 billion. China and Russia are very keen for a BRICS bank and an alternate currency uh, module. But India is still comfortable with the dollar, and they will be under pressure from America. Well, BRICS is still pretty small uh, compared to uh, the U.S. overall in terms of uh, international influence and its ability to really uh, deal in the, the global economy. But it's certainly a challenge to the established monetary system. And uh, BRICS offers a new way, or the, the BRICS uh, uh, new version of the International Monetary Fund that the BRICS are trying to put together uh, offers a new way for these countries to exert some international influence. If we look at the way uh, that the International Monetary Fund was set up. It allows 
much more influence for countries that are much smaller than the countries that are in BRICS right now. So we can see that uh, the way the IMF is set up, Canada has more influence than China and Belgium has more influence than Brazil. So those countries look at this system and they think, well, this isn't fair at all and we need to come up with something new. Now, will it replace the IMF? Um, it, that seems much less clear. I think really what we're looking at is a system internationally where there's more competition, where there are different blocks of influence, where there are different regions of the world that rely on different sorts of international monetary systems. The, the IMF probably isn't going to go away, and the United States is, certainly isn't going to go away either, but we, we are going to see that its power is going to relatively decline while some of these other countries become more powerful. So we're looking at more of a multipolar international economy as opposed to this one international economy that was so heavily dominated by the United States. The idea was that the creation of the bank would lessen dependence on the West and create a more multipolar world, at least financially. The Russian President Vladimir Putin said, this mechanism creates the foundation for an effective protection of our national economies from a crisis in the financial markets. The group has already created the BRICS Stock Alliance, an initiative to cross list derivatives to smooth the path for international investors interested in emerging markets. Brazil's President Dilma Rousseff has said, bringing emerging economies closer has become vital at a time when the world is gutted by the financial crisis and BRICS countries can't remain above international problems. We want justice and equal rights. The IMF should urgently revise the distribution of voting rights to reflect the importance of emerging economies globally. However, the U.S. is using any means that they can to destabilize the BRICS one by one. Take Brazil. Although Dilma Rousseff won easily the first round of elections, but after Washington accused her government for corruption on high indebtedness, her campaign had to work hard until reason prevailed. There's a massive effort of de-dollarization going on by the BRICS, led by Russia and China, the two strongest BRICS members. Since June of 2014, Ruble yuan swaps have taken place to free the two countries from the traditional trading currency, the U.S. dollar. Ten years ago, the world's reserves consisted of about 90% of dollar-denominated securities. Today, that figure has shrunk to 60%. The China-Russia deal worth a staggering $400 billion, a portion of it to be exchanged through local currencies. It was a major step away from the dollar. Then came the 13th Annual Summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the SCO, which was held in Dushanbe, Tajikistan, this past September in 2014. That also signaled a move away from the dollar. The main reason? Since the group controls 20% of the world's oil and half of all global gas reserves, that it would be in a position, therefore, to shift away from the dollar. The Russia-China energy deal, worth $400 billion, signed in May of 2014. By 2018, to have some 38 billion cubic meters of gas flow through the largest gas producer, Russia, to the largest energy user, China. It is many things at once, but more importantly, a step in the process of decoupling hydrocarbon trading from the dollar, as it foresees payments in local currencies, rubles, and yuan. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization that, that is currently scheduled to hold its next uh, meeting shortly has, uh, led by Russia, been, uh, there is a proposal here to launch a new energy alliance. Uh, uh, however, uh, I am very skeptical about the possibility for success of such an endeavor, simply because Russia is a major energy exporter, but many of the other members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, led of course by China, are major energy importers. And therefore they have naturally competing interests that the lower the oil prices, the better it is for China, but of the worse it is for Russia and vice versa. 
And therefore, I am personally very skeptical that these kinds of energy alliance initiatives can actually succeed any better than arguably the OPEC cartel is doing right now. Yes, it's just the latest effort uh, in addition to all of these uh, things that BRICS has been trying to do, and not just BRICS, but China independently as well with their introduction of a new infrastructure bank to, to rival the World Bank. Uh, and this energy plan is, is just the latest. And of course, China needs a lot of energy. They've been very active in Latin America with Venezuela specifically to really make sure and secure lots of oil. And Russia also, of course, is very rich in natural resources. So China is very much at work uh, throughout the world, securing the energy it needs and trying to do what it can to really create a international monetary system that's more in China's favor. All countries want to do this, not just for international reasons, but if they can get their currencies to be accepted more as a reserve currency, to be used more, to have more demand internationally. The 13th Annual Summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the SCO, that signaled a move away from the dollar. It was attended by the heads of state of Russia, China, and Iran, to name a few. The group's membership is poised to be extended to include India, Pakistan, and Iran. Mongolia is another likely candidate. If the SCO is to have real weight on the international arena and become a truly prestigious organization, it requires additional members. If India, Pakistan, Iran, and Mongolia were all to become permanent members, which looks likely, the group would then control 20% of the world's oil and half of all global gas reserves. This would fortify SCO's reputation as a dominant organization, and thus trade could possibly be done not in dollars. The power of BRICS. The population stands at 2.998 billion people. That equals 41.6% of the world's total. The combined GDP stands at $15.8 trillion. That equals the 19.8% share of the world's total. And when it comes to trade, total exports are $3.19 trillion, with imports at $2.95 trillion, making it a grand total of $6.14 trillion in total trade which represents a 16.9% share of the world's total GDP. To put things into perspective, the group of BRICS economies that includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa is the world's largest market. The combined GDP grew more than 300% in the last decade, while the developed world grew a mere 60%. What is for certain is that the influence of the dollar is diminishing, so much so that there are headlines like this one. The U.S. dollar could suffer the same fate as the Russian ruble. Well, that does it for this program. Your comments are always appreciated. Keep them coming to Economic Divide at PressTV.ir. I'll see you next week.